What's that big piece in the middle of that puzzle? It's marketing. All the crafting and drafting of your book is 10% of what it's going to take to get the book out. Marketing is 90% of the equation. So if you come back, oh, I think it's down here. Yep, here it is. And you actually look at the filled out puzzle. What you'll see is that the market piece is the largest piece of the puzzle. And the reason why is so important because a publisher isn't gonna market for you. And if you self-publish, you're responsible for marketing. So I want you to keep both of those pieces in mind. You are what is going to happen to that book. You're the face of the book. You're the person who's gonna talk about it on podcasts. You're the person who's going to be interviewed and you're the person who's going to be the speaker. And so nobody can do your push-ups for you. You've got to market your book yourself, okay? How do you do that? That's a good question. Mae West is one of my favorites, and this is a great quote. Too much of a good thing can be wonderful. You can never do enough marketing. There are lots and lots of different ways to market your book. And so the key components for marketing are who you're talking to, who is your target audience. We want to know. Because remember I told you about my book? Who was my audience? My audience was women. What kind of women? Well, it was for women who were in a certain age bracket that really weren't communicating with their money at all. Now, who are they? Well, they could have been anybody between the ages of really the, the 20s, but more so the late 20s to, in some cases, through the 40s to the 50s. It was that cohort of women that I was really shooting at. And the reason why was because they were the ones who were looking for a book on money. And at the same time, they were in all different forms of handling money, right? So it wouldn't have made sense for me to give this book an audience of college-age kids. Why? Because yes, they're learning about money, but they're not really quote unquote managing money, right? Because they're not earning money and having to deal with taxes and things like that. They're really basically living in a different paradigm than the person who's late 20s, 30s, 40s, who's really looking at what's going on. Now, I have people who read it who were 50 and 60 and 70. And the reason why they read it is because they had shut off their relationships with their money, right? And so talking to the reader is what you want to be clear about. Next is get your girlfriends together. If you guys get together and you have wine or you do something fun, get your girls together. Tell them about what your book is about. Tell them who it's for. And ask them, who do you think would read this book? The marketing is really important. And when you know who you think would be reading the book, then you have a much better shot at your language, how you write the book, and how sophisticated you're going to be in the book. Remember, the New York Times is only written at an eighth grade level right now. They dropped it from 10th grade in order to make it more consumable. And so in order to not lose readers, they lowered the vocabulary. Now, what is the lesson here? Don't write it over people's heads. If you want to impress people, it's not going to be with your vocabulary. Promise that I will tell you, you'll lose them as opposed to impressing them. And so don't do that to yourself.